progressive truth, and sanctification. The fact that the Bible teaches that we are to expect more prophets is letting us know that God has more to say to us. Quote, But the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. End quote. Proverbs 4.18 In some of the previously quoted scriptures, we saw the purpose for the gift of prophecy in the church laid out. Please notice the following stated purposes. Quote, and he gave some apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. End quote. Ephesians 4, verses 11 through 13. Quote, I thank my God always on your behalf for the grace of God which is given you by Jesus Christ, that in everything ye are enriched by him, in all utterance and in all knowledge, even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you, so that ye come behind in no gift, waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall also confirm you unto the end, that ye may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. End quote. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 4 through 8. The coming to fruition of these things is also called sanctification in the scriptures. Quote, to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. End quote. Acts 26, verse 18. Quote, so then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. End quote. Romans 10, verse 17. Since we are sanctified by faith, and faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word, and since the word of God comes through prophets, it is easy to see how the spirit of prophecy being active in the church has a direct and inseparable connection to perfecting the saints coming into unity, sanctification, and all things resulting therefrom. This truly is, quote, the everlasting gospel, end quote. Revelation 14, 6. And what is the gospel? Quote, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek, end quote. Romans 1, verse 16. How is the power of God revealed? Quote, For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. End quote. Romans 1, verse 20. The truth that the power of God in relation to faith is revealed in creation is also spoken of in the epistle to the Hebrews. Quote, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. End quote. Hebrews 3, verses 1 through 3. We understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God because God speaks and it is so. Quote, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. End quote. Genesis 1, 3. Quote, for he spake and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. End quote. Psalms 33, verse 9. Quote, and behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will, be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. End quote. Matthew 8, verses 2 and 3. Quote, and when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him, and saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. 
And Jesus saith unto him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me, and I say to this man, Go, and he goeth, and to another, Come, and he cometh, and to my servant, Do this, and he doeth it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled, and said to them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way, and as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed in the self same hour. End quote. Matthew eight verses five to eleven and verse thirteen. What we are seeing is that the word of God is not at all like the word of man. God quote, calleth those things which be not as though they were. End quote. Romans four seventeen. If a man does this, he is a liar. But when God does this. He is the creator in the very act of creating. The reason for this is that it is impossible for God to lie. Titus 1 verses 1 through 2, Hebrews 6 verses 17 through 18. So when he speaks of those things which are not as though they were, they are. Quote, for this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when ye received the word of God which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. End quote. 1 Thessalonians 2, verse 13. To emphasize the point, it is the word of God itself which does the work. So why is this important in regards to the subject of the spirit of prophecy? Just this, we are sanctified, made righteous, by faith, Hebrews 11, 7. And faith is believing in the word of God and depending on the word itself to do that which it says. And since the word of God always comes through the spirit of prophecy, when we cut off the spirit, we cut off the word, and thus faith and righteousness, and are then left in our sins as that which is not of faith is sin. Romans 14, 23. What a dark, miserable, and hopeless condition. But that is not what we want. We want the righteousness of Christ. And what is the righteousness of Christ? Quote, O oh, my people, remember now what Balak king of Moab consulted, and what Balaam the son of Beor answered him from Shittim unto Gilgal, that ye may know the righteousness of the Lord. End quote. Micah 6 verse 5. Quote, and Balak said unto him, What hath the Lord spoken? And he took up his parable and said, Rise up, Balak, and hear. Hearken unto me, thou son of Zippor. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? End quote. Numbers 23, verse 19. The righteousness of the Lord is his inability to lie. In other words, it is his truth, his word, his law. Psalms 119, 172, Isaiah 51, 6 through 7, 1 John 5, 17, and 3, verse 4. They are spirit, Revelation 19.10. They are life, John 6.63. 6, what stark contrast between the word of God and the word of man. Quote, For Zion's sake will I not hold my peace, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest, until the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness, and the salvation thereof as a lamp that burneth. I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day nor night. Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence. End quote. Isaiah 62, verses 1 and 6. To, quote, hold your peace, end quote, is to be silent. Here, though, God says that he will not hold his peace. He will continue to speak. Why? So that our righteousness, Christ's righteousness, will go forth as brightness, and the salvation thereof as a lamp that burneth. To obtain a better understanding of this verse, we'll take a quick look at Matthew 25. This chapter contains the parable of the ten virgins, five of whom were wise and five of whom were foolish. The five wise virgins had oil in their vessels as well as in their lamps, Matthew 25, 4, whereas the foolish only had oil in their lamps. 
Without going into much detail, we can see that the oil represents the spirit slash truth. 1 Samuel 16, 13, 1 John 5, 6. The oil in the lamps is the oil, truth, presently burning, presently lighting our way, whereas the oil in the vessels represents truth in reserve, which is to lighten our way at some future point. Bringing this back into the context of Isaiah 62, 1, we see that the Lord will continue to speak to us so that we will always have present truth, quote, as a lamp that burneth, end quote. Quote, Wherefore I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though ye know them, and be established in the present truth, end quote. 2 Peter 1, verse 12. There is such a thing as, quote, present truth, end quote. And it's about time we all know what it is. And how are we to know, save through the very method the Lord has used from the beginning, the spirit of prophecy? When we come to the place of realizing and admitting that we have repeated the errors of our forefathers and have done only that which is right in our own eyes, Judges 17, 6, that we truly are, quote, wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked, end quote, Revelation 3.17, and in need of everything, then and only then will we exchange our righteousness for Christ's righteousness, our word for his word, and our fables for his ever-progressing truth.